Today we'll find out how strong Jogo actually is. We're gonna hit all his abilities, why he became such a monster, and some new details from the anime. When he's first introduced, Jogo meets with Kenjaku with a goal to wipe out all humanity. This means he'd have to be strong enough to wipe out all grade 1 sorcerers and below, which he can, but the special grades are a different story. This leads him to ask Kenjaku for help, since he doesn't think he can do it on his own. Kenjaku is a special grade sorcerer with 1000 years of combat experience, one of the best barrier users ever, and a top tier in the series. Even when Jogo has the disaster curses, Dagon and Hanami, and their leader Mahito by his side, it's not enough for what they want to do. Dagon is strong enough to fight two grade 1 sorcerers and a grade 2 sorcerer at the same time. Hanami can fight Noritoshi, Inumaki, Megami, Maki, Toto, and Yuji all in the same day, all of which are equal to grade 1 in special grade curses and live to fight another day. Their leader Mahito is one of the most dangerous in the entire series. He has the highest rank of special grade, but also attacks the soul, and is almost impossible to kill for anyone who can't do the same. Even with all of them combined, Kenjaku thinks none of them are enough to beat Gojo or Sukuna. Both are the strongest in history and stand miles above everyone else where the only option is to join them or get them out of the way. After hearing this, Jogo ignores all Kenjaku's warnings and goes to kill Gojo anyway. Gojo is the strongest of his era, doesn't run out of curse energy, and changed the balance of the world with his strength alone. Yet Jogo faces him by himself. When Jogo crashes down to meet Gojo, he's impressed that Jogo lured him away from any support. But thinking this matters is an error, since Gojo is more than enough to handle Jogo by himself. Gojo can tell Jogo's special grade from his curse energy alone, and claims he's even stronger than Sukuna at the time. Sukuna was at 5% strength and his only real feat is blitzing and one-shotting a grade 2 curse and losing to Gojo. Even then, Jogo is confident about his strength and questions if Gojo is losing heart. But even in the face of a special grade curse, Jogo isn't enough to throw Gojo off guard. Jogo brings out one of his techniques, Ember Insects, that ring out sound and explode on their target. This is more effective than it seems at a glance since characters have been thrown off by sound before. While Gojo does survive, Jogo piles on the pressure and blasts him with his techniques. None of this hits Gojo because of his infinity. That slows down anything that tries to touch him, which gives Jogo no way to hit Gojo base to base. While Jogo is confused, Gojo explains to him how his technique works with a simple demonstration. Kento Nanami calls this a binding vow called Revealing One's Hand, that boosts the technique's effectiveness, which means Gojo's Limitless is now stronger than it was before. Now that they're close, Gojo grabs Jogo by the hand and loads him with punches. This is so strong, blood flies out of Jogo's mouth, and he questions what's going on, because he doesn't know Gojo's punches are mixed with blue. Blue is a technique that warps space, so Gojo punches people and then literally warps space on top of their bodies. This was enough to make Hikari and Yuta throw up from one hit, when Yuta is able to wipe out a country on his own. Knowing he has the upper hand, Gojo launches Jogo with his reverse technique, Red Glow. This same attack hit Toji so hard that he had to check for broken bones, and ripped off Sukuna's face, yet Jogo survives on top of his injuries. While Gojo chases him down, Jogo's desperate to respond and throws out any attack he can to counter. Gojo then blitzes Jogo and kicks him before he even knows what's happening. The same Jogo who's compared to the second fastest on the planet at the time. It's at this time Jogo remembers Kenjaku's warning that he died and thinks the only way to hit Gojo is inside of his domain. Domain expansions strip their target of any defensive techniques to be nailed by a guaranteed hit, but offensive moves are fair game. While Jogo thinks back, Gojo teleports to grab Yuji, since he thinks it's a perfect time to teach him about domain expansion. This is huge, since even as strong as Jogo is, Gojo is so far above him that he can beat Jogo and teach Yuji at the same time. Jogo's enraged when Gojo says he's weak, which makes sense when you know how strong Gojo is. Jogo is stronger than Kento Nanami, Toto, Ultimate Mechamaru, and Inumaki, all who can wipe out groups of sorcerers on their own. Yuji's in shock that Gojo called Jogo weak because he's levels above anything he's faced. Yuji has faced a special grade curse at the time, the highest rank there is. But even then, it doesn't remotely compare to Jogo. It's here where Jogo brings out his domain, the Coffin of the Iron Mountain. Domain expansions are the strongest techniques in the series, next to maximum techniques, that almost no one can escape from. 
As soon as he traps them, he launches a technique at Gojo that gets destroyed. Some people think this is Gojo's guaranteed hit technique, but the author clarifies it's a test he threw at Gojo. While he thinks, Jogo is surprised that Gojo's still alive, since many would burn alive from entering his domain alone. This means because of how hot Jogo's domain is, he hardly ever has to use his guaranteed hit to begin with. The only characters that should be immune to this are those who outscale him like Gojo and Toji, who would never be caught to begin with. After teaching Yuji his lesson, Gojo brings out his domain unlimited void and overtakes Jogo's. This works because there's three big factors with a domain clash, how polished it is, how strong the character is, and compatibility. Polished is how Sukuna's open domain breaks Gojo's from the outside, even though they're equal in strength. Gojo is stronger than Jogo, so he overpowers him, and compatibility is elemental advantages, like Jogo's fire against Hanami's trees. The domain hits Jogo so fast, he didn't have time to move and claims he can see everything, feel everything, and it has no end. Unlimited Void sends infinite information into its target's mind and floods them to the point they can't move. But the author gives even more detail than that. The author outlines how Unlimited Void works. Jogo isn't seeing complete info, like apple, 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 but instead A, 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 then P, 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 and so forth for everything in the universe. So it's infinite sets of information, not infinite information in general. Gojo's domain is used a second time in Shibuya later on, where half a year of information gets flooded into its target in two tenths of a second. The domain has at least one weakness, where whoever Gojo touches is unaffected, and it takes 50 seconds for Gojo to put his hand on Jogo in the anime. This means Jogo had up to 125 years of info flooded into his mind, and he still survived. After this, Jogo has his head ripped clean off his body until he's saved by Hanami. It's impressive that Jogo didn't go unconscious at any point in time, even after having his head ripped off and his brain fried. After they escape, Hanami brings the head of Jogo back to Kenjaku, where Akutami stresses that Jogo was close to dying from his fight with Gojo and took days for him to recover. Kenjaku mocks Jogo and reminds him he said he'd die and that the only way to deal with Gojo is to seal him in Shibuya. It's worth noting that Gojo never wanted to kill Jogo in the first place and wanted to question him, yet the fight was still this one-sided. After seeing the fight, Yuji's sure Gojo is the strongest and Gojo's goals for all of his students to be stronger than Jogo on their own. Most of Gojo's students match the strength of grade 1 curses and below at the time, but they do get stronger as the series goes on. Once he recovers, Jogo is ready to face Gojo again in Shibuya, but not with the intent of winning. They made sure to surround Gojo with people so he can't use any of his techniques, but Jogo and the others have more in mind. Jogo then meets Gojo with Hanami and Choso, all who are special grade curses, which means Gojo is facing three of the strongest curses alive at the time. To prepare, Jogo and Hanami learn domain amplification and use it to clash with Gojo's infinity. This surrounds the user with a barrier technique that turns off curse techniques, but limits them to physical combat. This is impressive, but it's not enough by itself, since they have to make sure Gojo doesn't use his domain. Jogo and Hanami both have domain expansions, but even if they work together, they'd never be enough to stop Unlimited Void. Jogo does start killing humans, but it's part of his strategy to stress out Gojo, to get him ready for Prison Realm. After seeing them in action, Gojo stops playing games and breaks Jogo's arm. He did this easily, which doesn't mean Jogo's weak since he's special grade, but Gojo's that much stronger than the curse. While this happens, Hanami makes an error and takes down domain amplification to attack Gojo with his technique. Jogo is smart enough to know this is a horrible decision, smarter than Hanami, and this gives away their weakness to Gojo. Gojo then strengthens his technique and overpowers domain amplification to crush Hanami till it's killed. It's important because it shows how much stronger Gojo is than the curses, since he never did this to Sukuna, who used the same ability. Jogo then runs away from Gojo terrified, while Gojo promises to kill the curses. Jogo and Choso could kill most of the cast combined at the time, but the fight is still too easy for Gojo. This is where the curses strategy comes in to stress Gojo out for Prison Realm. Prison Realm needs one minute of time to pass in its target's mind, so their goal is to make Gojo think as much as possible so they can seal him, not to win. Mahito joins with his army of transfigured humans, and Gojo shocks them with a 0.2 second unlimited void. This stuns the curses, but touching them would wake them up. So he kills a thousand transfigured humans in the five minutes Jogo couldn't move. 
Kenjaku distracts Gojo and seals him, and Nanami thinks it's over for every human in the country. This is true for the most part, since Jogo and the others could wipe out every sorcerer in Japan, but Yuta and Yuki still exist and can kill the curses on their own. When the curses attack, Dagon, another special grade, compares Naoito Zenin to Jogo in speed. Naoito is called the second fastest alive after Gojo. Jogo being in the same ballpark means he's faster than Yuta and most of the cast with few exceptions. Thanks to a five-man team with someone who could fight Gojo in his youth, Dagon is finally exercised, and when Jogo shows up, Nanami thinks he's on another level. Dagon was strong enough to fight two grade one and semi-grade one sorcerers, all equal to grade one or special grade curses, yet Jogo's a different animal altogether. One of these sorcerers is grade one, Kento Nanami. Nanami should be equal to a special grade curse on his own and survive Dagon's domain with no defense. Another is Maki, who can damage special grade curses with Playful Cloud and should match a grade one curse herself at minimum. And Jogo takes them down casually before they can even move. The attack Jogo hit Maki with is a warm-up he used for Gojo, while Nanami's was stronger since he thought it would kill Gojo early on, both of which he thought were insignificant. Naoito does dodge Jogo, which surprises him, but he can't do it for long because of his injuries. This stops when Jogo senses Sukuna's finger was fed to Yuji, and he rushes to feed Sukuna the rest. This brings Sukuna to 15 fingers, or 75% of his strength, whose full strength made him undefeated in the golden era. Sukuna is so fast he cuts Jogo's hand off before he even knows what's happening. This is very impressive when you remember he scales to the second fastest alive Nabito Zenin from earlier. Sukuna makes Jogo shake in fear from his presence alone, with an aura he compares to Gojo. Jogo's met some of the strongest grade one sorcerers and Kenjaku, a special grade, yet none of them could get this reaction from Jogo. Jogo pleads with Sukuna to keep control of Yuji's body, but Sukuna's not interested, and says he'll do as he asks for now if Jogo can land one hit in a fight. Jogo used to be stronger than Sukuna in his one and three finger forms, according to Gojo and Mahito, but now the gap between them is more than he can imagine. In the fight, Sukuna blitzes Jogo before he can touch him. This means Sukuna would do this to almost anyone in the series, since most don't compare to Jogo, let alone Sukuna. In the anime, we see even more of what Jogo can do when he fires machine gun blast at Sukuna that ripped through the city around them. Many would be ripped apart by this move alone, and it gives him more flexibility to fight from long range. When he still struggles against Sukuna, Jogo thinks about Kenjaku's gauge on his strength, where a generous estimate was that he's worth eight to nine Sukuna fingers, but the gap was even bigger than he believed. Each of Sukuna's fingers are worth a special grade curse on their own, so this being an overestimate is very significant. Jogo refuses to give up, and floods an entire city block with magma that tears down buildings. This gives him a way to wipe out an entire group of sorcerers alone and further shows his goal to kill all sorcerers wasn't that out of reach. He even uses magma to bring out massive hands that can crush the buildings around them, showing he can wipe out anyone not on his level with a single move if he really wanted to, which shows how much he held back on Naoito, Nanami, and Maki. Out of desperation, Jogo brings out his maximum technique, Meteor, to crush Sukuna. Maximum techniques are the most supreme art next to a domain expansion, and one of the strongest moves that Jogo has. The Meteor is still present even 19 days after Shibuya, and even caused earthquakes on top of leveling a chunk of the city by itself. Once it lands, he's sure this could have damaged Sukuna, but it never hit him in the first place. Sukuna was strong enough to low diff Jogo alone, so the fact that he could even damage him if this hit means Jogo would fry anyone near his level if this even touched them. It's here where Sukuna questions why Jogo never used his domain, and Jogo shows no confidence that in a clash, he would win. While Sukuna mocks him for not even trying, it's worth pointing out how strong Malevolent Shrine is. Malevolent Shrine is strong enough to be called Divine by the narrator for casting a domain with an open barrier. This gives Sukuna enough strength to shatter closed domains from the outside, even if they match him in raw ability. Before the fight ends, Jogo is brought into a space with the fallen curses, Dagon and Hanami, where Mahito is called the one with the most potential. Mahito learned domain expansion in a few days, matched Gojo's advanced version, and reached a new form all in one month, so this makes sense to say. Sukuna meets Jogo in this space and hears about his goal to take the place of humans. This goal is what held him back because had he chased his strength from the beginning, he could have reached Gojo and Sukuna's level himself. 
himself. He ends the fight saying Jogo's not bad compared to those he fought in the last thousand years, and to stand proud because he's strong. Sukuna has fought the Sun, Moon, and Star Squad, all with five people who are equal to Uro, who fights Yuta and Sendai Colony, so this is quite the statement to make. Sukuna and Jogo have a fire battle, where it's Jogo's flames versus Sukuna's, where even without boosting his strength by talking about his technique, Sukuna destroys the curse in the end. Later in Shibuya, Sukuna moves on to fight Maharaga, the strongest 10 Shadow Shikigami. Maharaga was never defeated by any 10 Shadows user in history, including one who fought someone with Gojo's same powers to the death. And the fight, Maharaga even pressures Sukuna, which Jogo never did, showing that even as impressive as Jogo was, he never compared to Maharaga in strength. Of course, Maharaga does lose to Sukuna, so Jogo was never going to win against Sukuna to begin with. When Shibuya is coming to a close, Kenjaku absorbs Mahito and takes his powers for himself, saying he wanted Jogo as well. The author comments on this matchup and says Kenjaku could have defeated them alone, but Jogo and Mahito together would be a challenge for him to deal with. Jogo's ability abilities are straightforward, but they're what help him be so much of a monster in the series. His ember insects emit sound and explode on their targets, and this is what he fired like a machine gun at Sukuna to destroy the buildings around them. Jogo's volcanoes can spawn on flat walls as well, and two of them were strong enough to kill grade 1 sorcerers like Nabito. He can also flood an entire city street with magma, which lets him kill groups of those weaker than him without issue. He takes this a step further by making hands out of the magma that he can use to crush and melt down his enemies. One of Jogo's utility moves is domain amplification. This lets him nullify the curse techniques of others, but limits him to hand-to-hand -hand combat. One of his most destructive techniques is his maximum, Meteor. This lets him fire a massive meteor from the sky that could level part of Shibuya, and even damage 15 finger Sukuna if it hit. His strongest move is his domain expansion, Coffin of the Iron Mountain, that burns most alive from entering alone, yet his guaranteed hit is unknown for now. The disaster curses were born with high curse energy, but that doesn't explain their ambitions for getting stronger in the first place. Jogo's desire was for curses to take the place of humans on Earth. Curses are made from negative energy that seep from humans in the first place, which is how Jogo was born. It's because of this that Jogo wanted to kill the humans and take their place. But the strength of curses was a testament that humans were evil in the first place because of how much negative energy they produced, making curses the true form of humanity. Jogo's desire to take the place of others held him back from reaching his full potential, because had he cast all that to the side and got as strong as possible, he could have reached Sukuna and Gojo, the strongest to ever live. In conclusion, Jogo is an incredibly fast and strong character, stronger than most, even after his death, but he still falls short to Gojo, who you can hear more about by clicking the video on your screen.